giving this evaluation provides the content of the speech, and then secondly, I will be speaking about the presentation of the class speech, and then lastly, Keith is going to be doing how well he handled the question and answer portion of the speech. So we will begin with Tim. Thank you, Jane, fellow Toastmasters, especially Bob. Thank you for this, this speech. What I'm going to look at today is just basically the content. Was it appropriate? Was it logical? Was it clearly stated? And then lastly, did you organize it using the inver inverted pyramid method, which I'll explain a little bit later. But as I listened to your speech, was it appropriate to us? And you started the speech by saying the 1 in 17 will suffer from major mental illness, and 1 in 4 will be affected. So was it appropriate? Well, obviously it is because it is something that may affect, well, if you have one in four, that's about five of us in this room will be affected somehow through that, and one of us in here has a major mental illness. Good thing I don't have a mirror. And you also then stated in 1960 there was 500,000 in institutions, and then when they deinstitutionalized, homeless became a problem. So you definitely made it very appropriate by giving us those facts and figures. So good job on that. Was it logical? Well, you made it very logical by telling us your personal story and what you went through, through the testing, evaluation process, and then how you challenged that evaluation. And then also, did it become clear? And as I listened to that story, the opportunities that are involved in this whole evaluation definitely became clear, as I thought, about what you had to go through and your findings that what they told you were not really accurate. And also, even worse, not more than accurate, but at times it seems that, you know, it's very subjective and a lot of collusion can be involved. The one part I really wanted to talk to you about and look at was that organization by an inverted pyramid. And I was wondering, you know, what really is an inverted pyramid and how does that apply? And the great thing about Toastmasters is it gives us manuals that we're trying to follow and a lot of times they get us out of our comfort zone, ask us to do something a little bit different. And the inverted pyramid is a journalistic tool where you will take and basically state the facts and get the essential things out there right away. In other words, in a, for a journalistic standpoint, then your editor can just cut everything else if they want to. Therefore, you want to get your point clearly stated. To tell a story, and then use that story in the end to really drive home your point. In this challenge, you were to really get the point out and then back it up with your story. So some of the things I thought you could do to help with that is, right in the beginning you talked about evalu challenging the evaluation process, and maybe to clearly state why you need to challenge it. And just, you don't have to delve into what you went through yet, just uh, you need to challenge it because it can be subjective, there can be collusion, and it can be inaccurate. And then also, you could have followed that up then. You talked about sensitive issues, but never really built upon that at all. And you said there was not professional words used. And I left, was left with, like, what? So you could fill all that in right away. So it would have grabbed us all saying, okay, there's a problem here. And then tell us your story to back all of that up. In all, it was a good speech. I really enjoyed it. You had all the parts of, that I wanted. But from a, the organization standpoint, if you'd have just flipped it around a little bit, you would have covered that manual objective a little bit better. But all in all, very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the presentation of your speech. First, I'm going to talk about the visual aids. At the beginning, when you were talking and you were using gestures to, with your speech, and then I like how you use the gesture of the book and you put your hand out like it was a book. So I thought you did well with some of your hand gestures. And then the summary, I really liked your visual aids, how you brought out the bag and then you talked about 
Winston Churchill, Martin Luther, and Jillian, and Ben Franklin, and Lincoln, and I didn't know all that. So that's what I really liked about the visual aids that came out, and then we could, you explained, okay, this is about them, and this and that. So I thought the visual aids, that was good. I'm going to give you some suggestions on this part, too. I think when, when you got up and you were standing in the table, you tend to put one hand on the table. I think at first you, you just need to relax maybe a little bit. I do that too when I speak, and I because you could kind of tell you were tense. But then as you spoke more, you relaxed more too. And then the hand gestures, I think what I would like to see if, if, if that's what you would want to do, like number, so you would, when you're speaking about the issues, and you're, you're saying major issues facing in this nation, stand over here and say one out of 17 have mental illness. One in four people deal with this. And then when you were talking about yourself, then come to stand in another section or something, talk like that. And so those are just suggestions on that. And for your objective, the PowerPoint, they said to use that. So for your message, so I was just saying. Okay, the next one that I'm going to focus on is your delivery was it effective and convincing. When you gave the statistics at the beginning, that was very good. When you talked about the statistics, the background, 500,000 institutions, and then you talked about depression and the forms and the evaluations, and I could relate because when I got in the chemical exposure, they did evaluations too, and I would read those evaluations, and so I could relate to what you were saying with the language and everything, and the reports, the conclusion of your speech, the delivery was very good, it reinforced your speech. And I think I have three words that I wanted to say, it was a strong ending, I like the ending of your conclusion. It was amazing, encouraging, and awesome. <laughs> and then I just wanted to point out about, you said about laryngitis, I couldn't even really tell that you had it at all. So it's like, you really did well with that, you know, having laryngitis and then speaking to us. You couldn't tell you had it today, so. I really enjoyed your speech, so thank you. Thank you, Jane. Ah, I was taking a look at how you handle the question and answer period today. And I also was listening to see by the tail end if your laryngitis was going to affect the quality of your voice, particularly when you move into your summary statement. So look at your summary statement as well. <laughs> what I look for in a question and answer period is that neither the question asker nor the question answerer uses that time for many speeches. So I want to applaud you. You handled the time crisply. Shared it with you. Actually, I took time to time, took time to time, I should be done this evening, man, to note the length of the questions and the length of the response. So the first question was asked in seven seconds, the response was 38 seconds. Second question was asked in three seconds, quick question, you had another 38 second response. Nice, crisp responses. So that's 86 seconds total, then at 26. Third question was we'll set up with some background, so it took 30 seconds to be asked. You just went a little bit longer with your response. You spoke in 48 seconds for your response. That total time is less than three minutes. Now, as you heard from the timer, the time of your Q&A counting your summary was 524. That means you spent two and a half minutes on your summary. I'm going to come back to that. So in terms of the Q&A, that was handled well. The other thing I look for in a Q&A session, when speakers transition from the speech, is a nice, crisp segue into it and a nice, strong ending or exit from the Q&A. Your Q&A intro was okay. We're going to move to questions. Think about this. I'm sure you have some questions. I would love to hear questions you have for me. Turn it as an opportunity to raise your voice and make the invitation even warmer. So that's why we, we throw those questions out there. I'm going to bet there were more than three questions ready to be asked based on the content you had and you heard from the other two about the good content that you had. Again, you handled the question and answer period well. You obviously wanted to have a message, or had a message you wanted to share in your summary. I can't say the hard and fast rule, I'm going to tell you my preference. So my preference is the summary statement gets taken care of in a minute or less. 
your opportunity as the speaker is to use that question and answer period for augmenting information that you shared or clarifying. So you're adding some additional information or clarifying some points. So you did a great job with that. I think you cheated yourself and us by spending as much time as you did on the summary. I would have loved to have heard at least one more question from the audience to let you use that for a teaching point. Like the way you answered the third question, you brought in, oh, actually, it was from the Kennedy administration. That was a great teaching point. I think you had some other teaching points that way. The summary was good in terms of information. It was nice hearing about the five people. I think you could have maybe used two or three and then got to that strong last statement you had in your summary and keep that part to a minute. That's something to, to look forward to. But as you exit from the summary, look strongly at the Toastmaster and then shake hands and reach down and pick up your books. But you had a fantastic overall handling of Q&A. Thank you. And now we're going to take a minute for Bob to speak about his speech, if he'd like to say anything. Yeah, what I had found with this speech was <laughs> really a challenge to deal with the conceptual part. I would have liked to have had something more solid so I could concentrate more on the delivery points. I also got missed one point because in the early 80s there was $18 per person per year in research. And that compared to cancer at $300 or compared to muscular dystrophy at $100. It was just incredible. And just our knowledge base in 25 years has gone up so much. The influence behind it, the knowledge is so much better, but the implementation is hard. And I would have liked to have just closed with, let's cut the nonsense, give these people a fair chance, and, you know, move on with things. Okay, so now we're going to ask the audience if you have any comments. Maybe I'll comment more <laughs> the vocal variety. So maybe it probably was maybe a little bit hard for you to speak, but I know it so it helped me is working with kids and you get I think of the kids and how excited they get. So I vocal variety I think what you could do is when you're doing your points and that, like at the beginning, you were giving the statistics and just think of getting excited when you were a kid and, and then your voice and and then with movement, your you know just with the vocal variety, work on that a little bit more. Like keep that mentioned. And, but I think that was about it. I was going to mention with that. So for okay. Any other one? People have comments? Okay, so that was two minutes. Yeah, I'd just okay. like, like to say, I, I love top level psychology. We just take the cream off of the top. I think there's a lot of trashy stuff. I avoid. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>